Hello students, this is a video for my mythology class. Classes, actually. And by the way, I'm going to do one video for both classes, so even though one class meets twice a week, or did meet twice a week, and one once a week, I'm going to compress it so that I can make the same video and give to both classes. I uh, hope that's not confusing for anyone. Um, also, I forgot to mention in the introduction video that it is important when you watch these videos uh, to have the textbook open um, at the uh, correct reading while you watch the videos because I'm going to revert back to the, revert back to the text um, quite often and it might be good to just be able to um, look at what I'm talking about uh, at the time of comment. All right folks we're going to talk today about Egypt and this was the material that I was going to cover on Tuesday Tuesday Thursday class and the first half of the Friday class and principally the story of Isis and Osiris we've already talked about Isis considerably uh, and how that she crossed over from the Egyptian pantheon into a more universal uh, acceptance of a, de a deity almost a cult-like figure like Demeter um, but I think it's a good practice to have a little bit of a historical background. So I'll give you a bit of information, most of which you can find in the textbook. If you turn to page uh, 539, uh, you'll see a history and geography of Egypt section. Uh, Egypt has a vast ancient history. We often talk about it in monolithic terms, uh, but it stretches over many, many centuries, and each period is quite different. So You'll see on the little chart there that the early dynastic period starts in 3100 BC. We go through the Old Kingdom, the First Intermediate, the Middle Kingdom, the Second Intermediate, the New Kingdom, the Third Intermediate, and the Late Period, leading up to 343 BC. And then Egyptian mythology crosses over into the Greco-Roman period uh, from 332 BC to 642 AD or, or CE uh, and that's the period that we're going to be looking at for the Plutarch version of Isis and Osiris here in a minute so it's good to look at that stratification of history also the the geolo ge uh, geographical setup uh, of the country if you turn to page 541 you'll see a simple map of ancient Egypt and you can see that Alexandria in the north to Heliopolis uh, under the Nile Delta, um, Memphis, Hermopolis, uh, Thebes uh, are all major cities with their own mythological systems uh, and if you keep going up the coastline there to the east you end up in Palestine which is where the Bible stories come from so you can see how close those two uh, um, regions are and how they cross over um, quite a bit, at least in biblical texts, uh, and probably ideas as well. So that's really helpful. Then you have a description starting on page 539 of each of the cities and their contributions um, to the mythical periods. Perhaps most important is the lists of gods and goddesses, uh, starting on page 540. We have Atum, Re, Amun, Hathor, Horus, Osiris, Anubis. And I won't go into the um, descriptions of those gods. You can look at them for, the, for yourselves. And I think you probably have already in doing uh, the task for this week. Um, the first part of the... Um, well, first of all, I should backtrack a bit before I get to the text. So I said that it's that Isis is similar to Demeter as an, an Egyptian goddess that sort of crossed over into a global phenomenon and came a, a cult-like figure that's revered in many uh, religious circles today. Um, when it spread to Greece and Rome, it rivaled Christianity. It was that powerful, the cult of Isis, um, but not as an expansion, expansionist religion. They didn't seek converts. They attracted people to the religion but it wasn't, uh, they didn't have missionaries per se, and it became extremely popular from 500 BC to 394 AD. 
and is popular today. In fact, um, Isis Unveiled is the name of the book written by Helena Blavatsky, which transformed religion in the 20th century. She came up with something called Theosophy, which is a blend of Eastern and Western religions, and it's all based on Isis. Um, also, um, the god forms in the Egyptian pantheon take on animal forms, not as essence, sorry, not as purely appearance. They don't have animal heads um, just to distinguish uh, their personalities, but also <clears throat> to portray their essence and uh, what, what they do as deities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as I said, uh, the cult of Isis became extremely popular and was adopted at uh, Eleusis, which we talked about last week, uh, in Delphi. And uh, Isis as the queen of heaven, or the mother, healer, sorceress, really fused with a lot of other deities and became sort of one universal deity. And a lot of people actually believe that when the Christian church uh, adopted the Virgin Mary in, um, as <clears throat> sort of like a, a female deity in the third century, that it was heavily influenced by the ancient um, approach to Isis. So uh, she's an, a really important figure. Um, the texts that we, I look, we looked at today, um, are um, I'm not going to go through them in detail because I'm sure that you've read them. There are a series of creation sources, the pyramid and coffin uh, texts. The pyramid would be royal texts written by royalty or for royalty, and coffin texts were usually for commoners or people that could afford to be buried. Um, and we read in those texts familiar stories about how new gods strive against old gods. It sort of takes us back to um, the Mesopotamians, doesn't it? Um, also, uh, in the pyramid text, we have a eulogy of a dead king, Osiris, sort of the same sort of ode slash worship poem that we've seen uh, in other texts that we've read for class up to this point. Um, we have um, the elements combining uh, as, as deities, Nut, the sky, Seth, chaos, um, these, these sorts of elements that we've seen uh, in almost all of the myth texts, the origin texts that we've looked at so far. And an interesting calling forth of the sleeper in the last coffin text in the book, uh, the sleeper being, of course, the dead Osiris. And if you'll remember, uh, this is uh, starts on page 545. And if you remember, we talked about the transition from monism to dualism last week. And the Egyptians are the first recorded peoples to make that leap. So they definitely believed in the ability for the soul to survive physical death and continue on in some sort of existence, uh, which is on portrayal here uh, in this particular coffin text. Then we get to Plutarch. Now, Plutarch is a Greek, late Greek writer um, from 40 um, BC to 120, sorry, 40 AD to 120 AD, lived a long life for that period. And he wrote the most complete Isis and Osiris story. There are many versions of it, but this is probably the most complete in a book called Moralia. And it's a retrospective account, so it's written centuries later, and of course it's propagandic, just like the uh, Snorri account of the Icelandic or Viking deities um, from the uh, context of a converted Christian. Uh, similarly, we have Plutarch really trying to uh, stress Greek superiority over Egyptian um, uh, thought. Uh, and the assimilation of Isis into the Greek pantheon as being um, now sort of owning uh, Isis from a Greek perspective. And that's why you get sort of a, a change in names in this particular account. So I'll go over those to make it uh, simple for you. Uh, Nut becomes Rhea, Ray becomes Helios, 
Toth becomes Hermes or Geb, Set or Seth becomes Typhon, and Horus becomes Apollo. So we're given all of these Roman names uh, for the Greek gods, and maybe that's a bit confusing. The story itself is quite interesting. I'm sure that you found it interesting. Uh, Toth winning a, a game of dra dra drafts, which is uh, what you call trackers, checkers, against the moon, and winning five days, five extra days of the year, which become the gods' birthdays, the first of which is Osiris. And like other gods in our discussions this semester, uh, Osiris civilizes the wor world and shows them how to farm. And we've had quite a few examples of instruction by a, a main god. Uh, in the art of farming. Uh, <clears throat> then we have the whole uh, dastardly um, plot where Typhon, or Set, conspires against Osiris, gets him into the chest by trickery, and throws him into the M Nile, followed by the mourning of Isis. And this is very similar to the mourning of Demeter for Pers Persephone. Um, and the, the box finally settles at the Isle of Bab Byblos, which is significant because it comes up earlier in the story um, as the, the place of his um, infancy. Uh, and then the story um, uh, has a few twists and turns, but basically um, Typhon manages to wrest the box back from Isis after she finds it. Uh, and cuts the body into 14 parts and scatters them across the uh, Egyptian world. Uh, and uh, Isis manages to, to retrieve all the parts except for one. And of course, it's the penis. It's always the penis, isn't it? Um, so she fashions a fake one, at least in this account. There are different versions of this story. She fashions a fake one. Um, and or or Osiris has to visit Horus from the underworld. And then a great war with Typhon ensues. Uh, there are a few twists and turns, but Typhon is finally defeated. Isis and Osiris bear Hippocrates. Um, and, and basically the story is that Osiris then becomes, takes over the underworld because he um, is dead, but still living. Uh, from Horus, uh, he takes over the underworld and becomes a... A, a, rise, a rising, sorry, rising savior type of figure. Other texts of this story um, deal with a rather different murder, different numbers of pieces found, Horus born later in this story, Horus blinded by Seth at some point, um, and Tothic uh, helps them him gain a sight and avenge Os Osiris. But the, all the stories lead to the restoration of what the Egyptians call Mat, M-A-A-T, which is a cosmic and social order. Um, when Osiris takes over the underworld, sorry, not from Horus, from Anubis, of course. I said oh, Horus earlier, um, forgive my mistake. Uh, when he takes over um, the underworld from Anubis, he is the one that starts, or this story is the one that starts the mummification process. Um, so if you're into Egyptian mummies, um, this is the generation of that practice. Um, Isis and Nephthys, of course, which is uh, her sister, um, become protectors of the dead. Uh, Isis then morphs into a sacred mother type figure uh, that watches over the living and the dead. Um, and her iconography is very evident uh, with a lot of other major goddesses of the period, including uh, the Virgin Mary, if I can include her as a goddess. Um, and then the last section of the text uh, has to do with the connection to the golden ass. And remember that Luci Lucius goes through all of the um, adventures and uh, it ends up with a a reveration of Isis. So there's the connection. I have to end this video now because I'm up to the 15 minute mark so I can post it. There will be a second one shortly on the Book of Toth. See you then.